These two previous examples are our first introduction to something called a rose curve, or like I called it a flower curve, because they don't look like roses to me, but they're called rose curves in the lingo. All right, so these are rose curves, and we kind of want to experiment with technology, i.e. we're going to use Desmos, all right? to play around with these and figure out how they work. In particular, we're interested in what patterns we can tell for B and N, where B is multiplied in front of the cosine and it's cosine of N theta, to be clear, and sine of N theta. So what effect does that have? All right, and we're just gonna vary one constant at a time because, you know, process of elimination. So I wanna show you the graph I've got here. So I have, um, r equals a plus b sine of n times d. I'm using d for my angle there. Um, well, I can let you see what I'm graphing here. So I actually use theta, so n times theta, but then I want theta to be less than or equal to d. And the reason I do that is because I want to be able to see the graph develop. If I don't do that, then it's just going to graph the curve, and that's kind of boring. I want to be able to kind of swing through with my d value and see the curve get built if I so desire. Of course, if I don't desire, I can let, you know, D stay out of 12 pi, and then I can just graph it, right, which is fine. Okay, so let's look and see what happens. So if it's A plus B sine, so for us, A is zero, because we are establishing that we're only looking at B cosine of N theta. So I'm going to actually get rid of the A part and make A turn into zero for us. Ah, but you can see A does have some kind of effect, right? There's something going on with A, but... We'll look at just B and N for this problem. Okay, so let's look at B. So B, look at that. If I swing B, it affects how far out the rows goes radially, right? How far the ends go, right? So that's the effect of B. I didn't actually put the grid on there because I wanted to be able to see the pretty, pretty graphs. But if I put the grid on there, you can kind of see it. Uh, let's see, grid, radial grid. Uh, let me put some axis numbers in there so you can see. Okay, so you can see that I have B right now at 3.4. Let me make it something nice like four. And you can see that's exactly how far out those petals are extending. They're going to four, right? Okay, so that's how it B does. So B, it makes it go wider or farther out radially, right, from the pole. So that's what radial means. It means distance from the pole. I guess I can say that. Which, of course, is the origin. Same thing. All right, now what about N? Oh, N's fun. B is kind of lame, but, oop, sorry, wrong way. There we go. As, as much as that, my background picture is fun. No, I did not take that picture. I just got it off the internet. Okay. So if N increases, let's watch what happens. Interesting. Hmm. Right? So there's a pattern going on. There's definitely some kind of pattern. So three, four, five, six, right? I can slow it down. So there's something going on here. I think it's easier to see on the smaller numbers. Oh, not that. I went the wrong way. Sorry about that. There we go. I'll leave it at four. Okay. So let me make it go back to eight. Huh? All right. Let me go back to four. So when I do four, there's eight petals. When I do six, there's 12 petals. Eight, there's 16 petals. Right? So that's why when I go 20, there's 40 petals in there. Huh? So N is affecting how many petals there are. Now, what about the odd numbers? It's easier to see on the low numbers. Five, seven, there's seven petals. Nine, there's nine petals, and so on. Eleven, there's eleven petals. Okay, so now we can see N affects the number of petals. Right? So when N is even, you 
integer, even integer, there are 2n petals. When n is odd, there's n petals. Fun, huh? All right, so we answered that question, but we actually saw some other things going on, which now is the time to, to mess with those. So let's go back. I can kind of match it to what's going on on the next sheet of paper. So let me play with these just a little bit. So if I let a, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it out at 12 pi. I'm not gonna bother swinging it around. So if, you, if I wanted to, I could play around with building these things. Ooh, that's fun, but let's, let's, let's not. Okay, so let me let a be like, one, B be like four. Yeah, that'll work. And then, yeah, cosine theta is fine, but let me let this be just one. Oh, notice what happened. It happens when I made it zero, of course, because then it's a circle, right? Because then your angle. All right. So there's one, there's two, there's one. Hmm. There's one. So if I go out more or in more. There we go. That looks like the one that's on the page. Let me show you right here. That's this one, right? So I made it so that a over b was less than one because I made a equal to one and b equal to, th oh, well now it's 1.6, but I started off at like four, <laughs> right? So there you go. It's called a limaçon, a limaçon with an inner loop, All right? Limaçon with an inner loop right here. So it has this inner loop-de-loop. -loop. If I make it so that it's one, so let me go back and make it so that a is also three. So that way three divided by three is one. Oh, I could just type it. It'd be faster. There you go. It makes a cardioid. It's a heart shape, which is what we graphed a couple pages ago, right? This one's a sideways one because I'm doing cosine. If I do sine there, it looks more like the one we did, but it's upside down. <laughs> All right. So cardioids. Okay. So then what about if A is just a little bit bigger than B, it makes something called a dimpled limaçon, right? It's got this kind of dimple over here, right? Isn't that fun? And then if A over B is greater than two, so if I make this um, bigger than six, there we go. So that's a dimpled limaçon, dimpled limaçon, all of those are dimpled limaçons. Once I get above six, you can't kind of see it, but it looks more like a jelly bean. It's kind of flatter over here. It's not flat, but it is flatter. That's the convex limaçon. So I went from dimpled limaçon to convex limaçon. So I ran through all of the limaçons right there. And you can see that n for all of them is one. That's how you make those, right? So I made n equal to one and it made those. All right, then for the rose curves, we are already seeing those. If I let n be, you know, something else. Okay, let me go make a go back down. There we go. So a goes back down, right? And here we go. Then I have these lovely petals, right? And b just affects how far out it goes, right? And so be it. Oop, even, there's 20 petals. Odd, so there's 11 petals. Even, so there's 24 petals. Odd, so there's 13 petals, right? So that's what that's showing there. Okay. And then last but not least, circles. So if I let N be one and I let A be one, then I have circles. Right? So they look like that. So B cosine theta, B sine theta. So this is B. Here, let me go back down. Whoop, I went too far. There we go. Oh, there's the problem. I can't have n be zero. If n is zero, then I don't have an angle. Then it just makes it a constant, right? So if n is one right here, then look what happens. It's that circle. And if I did a sine one, it'd be up there, right? So that's those two graphs right here, right? Cosine theta, sine theta, circle, circle. And then if um, to get a lemnus gate, you have to work a little bit harder, but you can do it. I actually have them pre-built right here. So there's lemnus gates. So if I want to graph that one, it looks like that. If I want to graph that one, it looks like that. Cool. So now we've learned all the basic kind of polar curves. Um, polar curves obviously can make lovely shapes. They have all sorts of fun names. So these are the lemnus gates. Um, these are the limaçons, the cardioids, the roses. They're beautiful. Right.
and they're a ton of fun to play with, especially in Desmos, because if you use mine, of course, or build your own, you can make it so that Desmos is building the function as you go. So I'll turn off the lemnus gates and turn back in these and make more petals and stuff. Then when I watch it go, it builds them. Isn't that fun? It's like a spirograph, if you, if you know what spirographs are. So it's good times. <laughs>